During the past few weeks, I have been watching a lot of videos and I have been doing a lot of research on the new J250 Land Cruiser. And in this video, I wanted to cover the things I would do to it if I bought it to use it off-road and to properly use it off-road, not just on dirt roads or mild trails, because on just dirt roads or mild trails, you barely need to do anything to it. If you want to go deeper into the unknown and onto some tougher trails, you will need to do some modifications to it because there are some weak points when it comes to off-road capabilities. I have some notes on my phone which I will be consulting throughout this video and I will also be putting right next to me so you can have a look as well. Now, the first thing I want to say is that overall the new Land Cruiser is very impressive off-road. I am glad that Toyota has actually kept the spirit of the vehicle alive. It shares the same chassis design and the same idea that this Land Cruiser does, which is now 25 years old. So the soul of the Prado is there. It is still a very capable off-roader that can also handle road use, can take the family to school, can take the kids to school, can take the family on a road trip, but can also take you in the middle of nowhere which in my opinion is one of the best things. I love vehicles that can do a lot of things and can do them really well. But in any case, I digress. The reasons why the new Land Cruiser is really good off-road is that it has good articulation compared to other new vehicles which have independent front and rear suspensions. The solid rear axle of the Land Cruiser provides good articulation, but also the front end, even though it is independent, has a sway bar disconnect system, which can disconnect the sway bar from the two front wheels, which enables for more articulation. So even though it is independent suspension, it can still actually flex quite nicely for what it is. It has great traction systems. Toyota has perfected their off-road traction control. So in sticky situations, if it, even if you don't use your diff lockers, you can use crawl control. You can use multi-terrain select, A-track, which will get you out of most uh, difficult terrain. It has a rear and center diff lock, which is standard on all trim levels. This is very impressive. It used to be an option on these older Land Cruisers. It was an option, but the new one has a diff lock on all trim levels, which again emphasizes the fact that Toyota made this vehicle to be driven off-road. It is not a mall crawler or a city vehicle. Also the hybrid system, believe it or not, helps it crawl slower because you have the electric motor. The crawl ratio is better than the actual ratio in the differentials. It helps the engine basically drive the vehicle even slower than it would if it didn't have the electric motor in place. And all of the above are very useful off-road, but as soon as you're done off-roading, as I mentioned before, you get back on the road and you drive back home as if you are in a normal vehicle, which is great. In most extreme off-roaders, driving on the road isn't all that pleasant. A Wrangler will be more capable than a Land Cruiser off-road because of its solid axle and because of even more articulation. However, as soon as you get on road, the Wrangler won't be as good as the Land Cruiser. So it is kind of a middle ground. The Land Cruiser also has better payload and better towing capacity. So it is much better suited to overland adventures, to long haul off-road expeditions, rather than full on rock crawling trails. Now, that being said, the Land Cruiser has its weak points. As I just said, it is not a rock crawler. It was designed to cover long distances, either on or off-road, to carry a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of weight, a lot of gear, and take you to some of the most remote areas on Earth. Of course, it no longer has the simplicity of old Land Cruisers, but being Toyota, I would believe that it is still reliable enough. However, only time would, will tell if the hybrid system and the smaller turbo engine will be able to cope with extreme off-road use over long periods of time. However, as of now, and based on previous track record, when it comes to Land Cruisers, we can safely assume that it will be more reliable than other vehicles on the road. Its weaknesses are the street tires that uh, most less expensive trim levels come with, its ground clearance, 
approach and departure angles and that's pretty much it to be honest the tires are street tires so they are prone to punctures and they don't provide and they don't provide much grip and because there are low hanging stuff under the belly of the vehicle it is relatively easy to belly out on the new land cruiser to run out of clearance under the skid plates up front or to hit the front or rear bumpers when you're getting down or, or driving up obstacles the first thing i would do to resolve this issue would be a lift kit you can probably get the same lift kit that a forerunner trd pro or trail hunter has and get it installed on the land cruiser straight away because they are basically the same vehicle that will give you roughly two inches of lift and then you can go for larger 33 inch or 35 inch tires which will provide even more clearance the larger tires will also help the land cruiser roll over large obstacles more easily it will provide more grip and more puncture resistance now 33s will fit without many modifications especially if you put a lift kit however 35s will need some alterations in the front guards you will need to remove the the two air ducts on the side and the crush bar inside the wheel well behind the front wheel as soon as you do that depending on the offset of your of your wheels because that also plays a role you shouldn't have any issues with 35s as well and from some of the comments i have seen the 35s don't really seem to bother the new land cruiser all that much it has a lot of power it has a strong suspension system and its engine pulls the bigger tires fine and the suspension seems to handle them fine as well so if you want to head on to the more extreme ta trails then 35s would be recommended however as you may be aware you will increase your fuel consumption and you'll also increase the stress on the vehicle on the axles on the ball joints on the bushings pretty much on everything so if you're not really planning on heading towards the really tough trails stick with the 33s i know the 35s will look really cool on the new land cruiser in fact there have been some of them that already have 35s on them and they look absolutely amazing if i would buy a new car right now the new land cruiser would be it i think but in any case i digress from there on if you want to take it a step further you can replace the front and rear bumpers for steel bumpers so you can hit stuff off-road basically and so that you can also install a winch and if you are really planning on taking it to the most tough trails that exist you can go for a front locker and as soon as companies like marlin crawler come out with the wider and heavy duty suspension kits which basically replace the upper and lower control arms and the knuckles and the whole steering rack for wider and stronger units which enable you to install tires up to 37 38 or even 40 inches then you can take that route as well but as soon as you go there the land cruiser is basically ruined you can't get it back to stock again as soon as you install 38 or 40 inch tires you will need to cut the body and you will have a dedicated off-road rig or a dedicated rock roller which could obviously be driven on road but can never be turned back to stock if you want to sell it as a stock vehicle but if you don't want to do that and if you have the budget to go full out and you love the tough trails and you love toyotas and you don't want to do it in another vehicle that perhaps has a solid axle in the front from the factory as well and would be more suited to larger tires then go ahead and do it but that would be a really small percentage of new land cruiser buyers that being said i can't wait to see this being done to some of the new land cruisers because they will look sick and they will be really capable of road independent suspension on 40 inch tires provides huge clearance benefits which in some cases outweigh the benefits of a solid front axle and in some areas 
independent front suspension, heavy duty independent front suspension with huge tires is more capable than solid axle with huge tires simply because of the clearance you gain in the front. Of course, you can also add camping gear, but that isn't really tied to the Land Cruiser specifically. This is more of what I would do to the Land Cruiser specifically if I wanted to drive it off-road. You can also add rooftop tents, a fridge, electrical system. You can go all out as far as camping gear goes, but that doesn't really change from vehicle to vehicle, especially if you compare wagons to wagons. So that is a topic for another video. But in any case, this is pretty much it. If you already own a Land Cruiser, then well done. I am jealous. I want one as well. If you are thinking of buying one, I would go ahead and get one because it is a great all-arounder. It is comfortable, it is capable, it is good-looking. Land Cruisers in the past were much more conservative. The look of them was much more conservative. They didn't really play the game that Jeep plays, Ford plays with the old-school design, which was a shame, to be honest. I, I love the old-school design on new vehicles and it is really nice to see that Toyota has brought it back with a new Land Cruiser. It also has an old school build, but on top of that, it has a hybrid powertrain that keeps it up to date, keeps it relatively economical. The hybrid system in the new Land Cruiser isn't really meant for economy, it is, re it is mostly meant for power and towing, but the hybrid system means that it will be more future-proof than other 4x4s on the market. So yeah, this is pretty much everything I wanted to mention in this video. If you have any questions, if you own a Land Cruiser, the new one or even an, even an old one, and you have any questions regarding modifications, drop a comment down below. I would probably be able to help you because I have a lot of experience with these vehicles. I hope you have enjoyed the video and I will see you on the next one.